Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. In this video, we are going to see the development of heart, part 2. So in part 2, we are going to see the formation of sinus venosus and the structure derived from the sinus venosus. Okay, let's move on to the video. Now, the formation of bulboventricular loop brings the sinus venosus on the dorsocaudal side of primitive atrium. This you can understand if you see the previous video of development of part in part 1. So this grows in a transverse direction and the sinus venosus present right and left horns. So each horn has a body wall and then roof and floor. So each horn receives common cardinal vein. So this common cardinal vein is formed by the union of anterior cardinal vein and posterior cardinal vein. So right side common cardinal formed by the union of right anterior cardinal vein and right posterior cardinal vein and left common cardinal vein formed by the union of left anterior cardinal vein and left posterior cardinal vein. Next, the floor of the sinus venosus receives a pair of umbilical vein, right and left umbilical vein, and a pair of vitalin vein, right and left umbilical vein. Now, the floor of the sinus separated from the septum transversum and receives this pair of the umbilical and pair of vitalin vein. Ventrally, the sinus venosus communicate with the primitive atrium through sinoatrial orifice. Later, a sickle-shaped fold develops from the left side of the orifice. This reduces the size of the orifice and the part of the left horn get absorbed towards the right side of dorsal wall of primitive atrium. So now what happens? The entire volume of the blood conveys to the right half of primitive atrium. So now with the appearance of the hepatic bud, the suprahepatic part of right umbilical vein and left umbilical vein and the left vitellin vein get disappears. The suprahepatic part of right vitellin vein is there, no? That forms the inferior vena cava. Now, the cardinal part of right anterior cardinal vein is there, no? This is going to form the superior vena cava. Next, the right posterior cardinal vein, the cephalic part of the right posterior cardinal vein forms acegas vein. So now what happens? The entire blood from the cephalic and cardinal part of the body is received only by the right half of the sinus venosus. So due to the heavy load of the blood in the right horn of sinus venosus, it enlarges a lot and this later is going to form the smooth part of the right atrium. The left horn and the body of the sinus venosus it is going to form a narrow tube-like structure and this is going to persist as coronary venous sinus. So, and the next thing what happens? The oblique cross connection extends from the right anterior cardinal vein to the left anterior cardinal vein. And this is going to form the left brachiocephalic vein. So, and then a left duct of Cuvier which is connected to the left horn which persists as oblique vein of the left atrium which is a smallest tributary of the coronary sinus and this coronary sinus is separated from the left atrium by means of a small sinoatrial fold. Thank you friends. Thank you for watching this video. If you like this video, please share and subscribe.